Well, there really are only two types of people who go to the gym. Those who follow everything I've taught them about workouts and complete morons. Well, I've been doing this for so long and I know so much that really I feel a, a masterclass about weightlifting taught by me will be good for, um, everyone. It's all very well and good for the ordinary meathead to say, I pick up heavy things and I put them down again. But weightlifting really is so much more of a... of an art. Obviously, we're going to cover how to do things right, but what do you do when things go wrong? And unfortunately, I've never done anything wrong, so I can't speak to that. You're either lifting with me or you're not really lifting. It's as simple as that. The time has come. The moment that at least one person has been waiting for has finally arrived. It's been over a year since this person contacted me asking me if and when I would create an episode teaching you how to perform a bench press, a deadlift, and a squat, the three kings of the exercise world. And so here we go. <laughs> Now, originally, I had wanted to find someone locally who was a power lifter, who could be the model, who could actually do the demonstrating of all of the, uh, the proper elements for each of these lifts while I did the narrating. And I was going to also include information about proper safety. I'm going to save all of that for another episode. Today is literally just how to do each of those lifts, which means we need to pause right now and I need to emphasize, re-emphasize this screen at the end of every episode that I put up. Um, I'm not there training you. I'm not certified by any uh, institution. I did not get a degree in any of this in college. This is information. It is motivation. Um, but you need to be responsible. You need to be responsible for making sure that you are performing each of these lifts safely and uh, potentially checking with your doctor if, if you've never done any weightlifting, if you are not fully aware of your body's capabilities, um, go get a physical, you know, whatever it takes. That's all on you, all right? Just stressing that right here. This is information. And uh, I, I believe it's solid information. I will actually run it by uh, the guy who trained me in 2017, Mark Prickett, before I post it. So if you're watching this, uh, it has Mark's stamp of approval. I see other videos on YouTube where they have the professional lighting and the really good 4K HD camera. And they clearly have a cameraman and microphones. And I just don't have that. If you really want the good videos, they're out there. This is me. This is Brian. This is the guy you've been following for 42 other episodes doing it my own homemade way. I've got some shots that are out of focus. Um, I wore my stringer tank one night and um, I kind of wish I hadn't. I thought maybe I should even reshoot it, but we're, we're going with it. We're going forward with it. This is the, this is the no budget <laughs> big tiger version. Uh, you know, here we go. What did you expect from a guy who, uh, who creates these videos out of his washing room. We interrupt your program a couple of days later. Real quick, I'm not even going to put the camera on a tripod for a nice stable shot. Conveniently, however, I am wearing the same t-shirt. But I just want to say that I recorded the commentary for this episode thinking that it would be a nice, concise 20-minute program. When I loaded it to my computer to edit it, I had over an hour of me talking. I had no idea. Anyway, I started throwing out anything I didn't feel was essential to the specific training of each lift or very helpful advice and got it down to 40 minutes. And then I looked and looked, I watched it again and again, and I just, I cannot justify throwing out anything else. 
So it is now a two-part episode, so just make sure you stick around and see both parts. This first one will cover the bench press, and it breaks off about halfway through the deadlift. So the deadlift will pick up in episode 44 and finish with the squat. And so there we go, back to the program. We'll start with the bench press because that's where everyone starts. If you go to a gym on a Monday, you will find half the people there doing the bench press. It's the stereotypical muscle head lift. Every bro out there wants to know how much can you bench. Uh, Sometimes Monday is called International Chest Day for that very reason. So we'll kick off with that. It's foundational, it's iconic, and so here we go. Um, I'm going on the information that Mark Prickett taught me plus uh, some tips that a couple other people threw in um, and then my own experience based on my height, my form, my skeletal structure, all of that, my build. Um, so if, if any of this varies, if you discover that any part of this doesn't work for you, there, there, there may be variations out there that I'm just not experienced enough to, to speak to. So just keep that in mind. But uh, as you lay back, let's go ahead and start uh, from the ground up. Place your feet firmly on the floor. Um, I strongly suggest spread apart. Uh, it provides way more stability. If you put your legs together... Just like if you try to stand with your feet together, you reduce the amount of support that your that your feet and legs can provide. That's there for stabilizing. If for any reason you start to topple to one side or another, you have that extra bracing down there. And uh, placing them flat on the floor will give you some uh, some push here later when you actually start to lift the weight. Now the shoulder blades need to be tucked back. you want to actually tuck those behind you uh, as if you are in the decline position of a push-up and so that they create this flat support on the bench itself to grip the bar for the basic bench press your hands should be about shoulder width apart now the typical barbell has a grooved area so that your hands don't slip around a lot but there's usually some kind of smooth ring in there and it's uh, on both sides and that's to make sure that wherever you put your hands they are equidistant from the center so that you don't have an imbalance. For me, I have found that putting my pinky on that ring is just about the ideal place for my hand placement. I will include this safety tip. I strongly encourage you to do a full grip. Fingers over the top, thumbs underneath for support. Some people like to do a grip where they do their fingers over the top and then their thumb is placed beside their hand instead of underneath the bar. This is sometimes referred to as the suicide grip because you have taken away all underneath support. Uh, I, I suppose technically not all. You could tip your wrist back far enough and have the bar resting on it, but if for any reason your hands come up, you've lost that support and you get this effect here. Now. I I performed that demonstration pretty safely because I just let the bar fall right onto the the bench supports. But if you're in the middle of a lift and that is over your chest, that will come straight down on your chest and if you've got enough weight on that bar, uh, you are going to do some serious damage. And now you're in the position to begin. You're going to apply pressure to the bar, push it up into the extended position, and get ready to do the bench press. All right, let me see if I can put these thoughts in a nice organized manner. Um, Let's start with your breathing actually and and this will apply really to every exercise you do. You want to inhale, get a full set of lungs, get get oxygen filling the lungs uh, in the easiest position uh, so that you have all of that oxygen going into your system and coursing through your veins and into your muscles while you're doing the hard work. And so uh, I inhale well, first of all, I inhale to get the bar off of the off of the rack itself, especially if I don't have someone there helping me. And then when I've got it in the extended position, I exhale and inhale again so that I have a fresh set of lungs to begin. And then the uh, bar comes down and I push. And if it's really heavy, sometimes you will actually need to use or, or, or exhale some of your, your breath as you go. Um, Some people advocate actually holding it all in until you hit the top again. Some variations there, but basically inhale at the top, hold it in, use that oxygen as you push the bar, and then exhale at the top or exhale on your way up and get a new breath at the top. Keep 
breathing. And I've occasionally had some people have to tell me that sometimes I will do two reps or even three on one breath if it's light enough, if I'm still in the warm-up phase. Here are here here is where we need to really describe what's going on because it's not a matter of just letting that bar come crashing down and then pushing it back up again. Um, with almost every lift out there, I would say every lift out there, it's not a matter of just going through the motions. Your mind has to be in the right place. And so the first thing you need to remember is to bring that bar down controlled. Don't just let it fall. Bring it down in a controlled manner. Uh, and then there's the, de de the debate, excuse me, uh, can't even get the word out. Then there's the debate about how low to bring it. Some people bring it all the way to the chest, to the clavicle. Some people like to stop before that. Uh, when I worked out with Jay, uh, he does not like to bring the bar all the way to the chest. He believes that what that does is it gives you a moment to actually relax your pectoral muscles. And f for his way of thinking, the last thing you want to do is give your muscles even a fraction of a second of a break. Okay. Um, everybody's a little bit different on that. I tend to bump the chest. I do discourage bouncing off the chest. There are people who like to let it hit just hard enough that, that the rib cage actually retracts and pushes back out again, and that gives them a little boost. Um, I just see, the, the heavier a person lifts, I just see injury there. And maybe I'm being paranoid, but <clears throat> I, I would say nothing more than just touch the chest. So that needs to be under control on the way down. And then when you're pushing up, you really focus and you give that bar a mighty heave and get it up. Uh, I say mighty heave, you know, if you're working really light, you may not need to go mighty, but anyway. You, you also have to keep your mind on exactly where your, uh, your arms are. My mistake when I first started was that I put my arms directly out to the sides, parallel uh, to each other, really. I guess forming a straight line across my shoulders there. <clears throat> um, Brad Barrett was the first one to point out to me, you don't want to do that. That puts too much strain on the shoulder muscles. The, the safer way to do it, and, and the way that push puts more emphasis on the pectoral muscles, is to bring the arms actually to more of a 45 degree angle. Um, tuck them a little closer to your body and push up that way. And so then, with all of that in mind, bring that bar down, push it back up, do a few of those, rest the bar again. And finally, let's talk about the arch in the back. I did not know about the arch in the back until uh, Mark trained me in 2017. Um, and he pointed out I need to arch my back, especially if I want to enter a competition. Uh, the professionals all arch their backs. It gives them extra support. It actually creates, um, uh, or it, it, it's strategic. It is actually strategic for winning a powerlifting competition. And some people really arch their backs. I've seen some YouTube videos of people that look like they are uh, one step away from being able to join a circus as a contortionist. My back does not arch that much. I don't know if I just haven't done enough um, limbering up exercises in my youth if I'm just getting older and tighter but that's about what I can get for an arch but you can see I can still get my hand under there and uh, it does help it helps put your shoulders into the bench more it it helps your feet and your glutes provide more support um, it just it's an it is an added element lift number two the deadlift this is good for the lower back and legs uh, in fact, it works the legs enough that I was confused for a long time as to why people called it a back exercise, why they saved it for, uh, for the day when they were working their back. I can feel it now as I, as I am able to lift heavier, as I'm able to, to add weight to my deadlift, I can feel that the lower back definitely gets a good workout. Um, this is a tricky one for me. Um, I don't know that I'm even the best example with this footage. Um, to, to get it absolutely nailed, but I will go ahead and attempt to describe it, and again, I will run it through uh, the people I trust to clear this information before I, I post it for you. The way to approach the deadlift is to walk up to it. Um, Mark had me go all the way up so that my uh, shins were touching the bar. I've learned over the past three years that that's just a little too close for me. I need to be back a couple of inches. I don't know if it's because I still have this 
a large abdomen with too much fat in the way or, or just something about my overall posture and build. But I, I find myself leaning forward too far when I go down to pick up the bar. I just feel like I'm going to topple forward. So I actually do back up just a couple of inches away from the bar. Uh, feet spread about shoulder width apart. This has been an interesting debate with my friends on my bodybuilding network. They see footage of me doing the deadlift and they are stunned that I don't put my feet further apart. And there are options for that. There are variations on the deadlift, just like there are on the bench press. Although now that I think about it, I didn't talk about those. I'm not getting into variations today. This video is already going to be hard enough to fit in 20 minutes, I can tell. Um, feet shoulder width apart, just like your hands on the, on the bench press. Because, because of that width, my arms will end up a little bit wider than shoulder width when I go down. Um, but uh, And then knees forward. I'm going to say knees forward. Uh, the, the teaching I got was feet forward, feet straight forward. I have a small genetic problem from the day I was born, just the way my body is built. My left foot and my right foot, see if I can demonstrate here, do not nicely can't get it. There we go. Ah, there we go. Do not nicely point like this. My right foot is built onto my ankle so that when my knees are pointed forward, my right foot is doing that. So that's how I walk. That's how I stand straight. Um, I've got the right foot actually out a little bit. Um, you can see it in some of this footage. Um, I'll get a couple shots here to just kind of exaggerate the effect. There, that's me in the bathtub. Yes, I brought the <laughs> video camera into the bathtub. When I rest my feet up on the edge of the tub, the right foot falls way far over to the right, way much further over than the left foot. So I have to adjust my stance a little bit and I will say right now that actually affects my squat a lot more than my deadlift. But the first thing I do is I make sure that my knees are pointed forward. You'll see in footage of me doing the deadlift that one of the things I do is I actually bounce a little bit. I go down a little bit to make sure that I am happy with uh, my knees being forward and the, and the way the pressure is applied, especially to that right foot with its, uh, with its genetic deformity. I'm a freak. This takes some practice over many, many workouts, but the next thing you do is look down at the bar, see where it is, know where it is, get it into your head. Extend your arms down, straight down. I, I guess extend is the wrong word, but, but straighten them, stiffen them straight down, hands open, ready to grip that bar. The way I was trained was that the best thing you can do is not have to look at the bar. Look straight ahead, know where it is, go down, grab it, and start back up. And we'll get into those details, but that's, that's your starting posture. You are ready to go straight down and grab that bar. All right, which brings us up to another debatable point, because when I went to a powerlifting meet last year, I noticed that contrary to how Mark had trained me, every powerlifter there, when he approached the deadlift, went down, gripped the bar, and did all of his setting up in the lower position, in the crouched position, making sure his feet were ready, making sure his grip was ready, and then executing the deadlift. So I wrote to Mark and said, is this, is this something I should be paying attention to? And here was his advice. He said, no, that wastes your energy. When you go down and you're in a crouched position, your, your muscles are activated now. Your muscles are being used. And so the people who go down and prepare themselves when they're down there are using up vital lifting energy before they even have a chance to lift the bar. He said, stand up, get ready from there. When you're ready, drop, grab it, stand up. 